Hey guys, how are you? I want to explain you something about uh, my system and how I plant the fruit trees on my land. As you maybe know, I started only with a piece of uh, 1.5 hectare, where I planted like approximately 250 fruit trees now. And if you have that many fruit trees, it's kind of a plantation, right? And um, you may need a good system to maintain all these fruit trees. So I had to do a decision. How am I going to organize all this? Because also I'm not here all year long, so some workers have to come to maintain. So I had to, go to have an idea of, uh, of organizing the fruit trees in a way that they are easy to maintain and in a way that uh, they are supported, their growth is supported. So I decided to, to organize my fruit trees in lines, you can also call it hedges, made of supportive species like Madeiro Negro, Poro, Senna Reticulata, Ice Cream Bean, stuff like this. All these lines, here's an example, this one, this is one of the longer, it was maybe 120 meters, just next to the river, it's the first line. And yeah, every 80 centimeters, it's approximately this distance, the machete, I have planted one of these supportive species. And every 8 meter in this hedge, I planted a fruit tree. And always between the main fruit trees of 8 meters, there is a smaller tree or fast growing tree or ice cream bean, like, uh, which is also supportive and which I probably will cut down after 10 years when the main fruit trees are growing really huge. I will cut the ones which are just between them because the distance will be too close. So finally, because also the lines are 8 meters apart, I will have a distance of 8 to 8 meters around the fruit trees. So, I'm gonna explain you something about the supportive species and why I planted so many of them. Like the ratio of, uh, of the amount of supportive species to, to fruit trees is like now more than 95% of supportive species and only 5% of fruit trees. Like there is nearly 2000 of these plants and only 250 fruit trees but uh, like the weight the, the, the biomass is much more so it makes more than 95 percent they are fast growing you plant them with a stick i will show you as example you run it there gonna cut a piece this Beautiful piece, approximately 5 cm di diameter, nearly 2 meters high, perfect to plant. Best time to plant is when it's a little bit rainy, not too swampy but rainy. And perfect is cutting it like this and instantly planting it. But it's also possible to store it in the shadow for several uh, days. I think I did it even some weeks, but the uh, percentage shrinks, which are growing successfully after a long time, so better to plant it really fresh. And it's important that there is a good, fresh, s sober cut, clean cut. And if the soil is really soft, really, really soft, like sandy, sandy, like sometimes here, it's possible to plant it like that. Now it's like this deep in the soil, that's perfect.
Give me a little bit of compression here. Maybe a little bit of mulch around, not too much, just uh, that it doesn't dry out too quick. And we grow in a few days. There's a good humidity. You will start to see new shoots and create new roots. It's damn fast growing stuff. If the soil is harder, take the shovel because you will uh, hurt the, the bark and it will probably rot and it will struggle to, to grow. So yeah, that's, that's how I, I did all these lines, like it's <laughs> nearly 2 km of, of lines every 80 centimeters. It was a lot of work, but uh, it pays out. Um, if you plant a stick like this, in one year from this stick you can have five or six new ones like this. Huge, huge. Afterwards I will uh, show you some examples and how, how pretty fast it's, it's growing. Okay, purpose. Supportive species. Madero Negro, ice cream bean, Senna reticulata, Poro, they have something in common. They are nitrogen fixing plants. And they are leguminous. That's what you want as a supportive species because they fix the nitrogen into the soil through their roots first. And you can chop and drop. Well, here's the fruit tree, so collecting it a little bit, putting it directly there, will release a lot of nitrogen and other nutrients into the soil, taken up by the root system of the fruit tree. Also, cutting it down makes the root system, or part of the root system, disappearing, rotting, also releasing nutrients. The root system by itself that is growing softens the soil, creates a nice climate in the soil, structure, everything. The leaves are creating shadow, very very big point, because fruit trees, especially young and small ones, they like to be in the shadow, don't plant them in the direct sun, maybe there are some exceptions that can be planted directly in the sun, but better in the part shadow afterwards when they reach a big size like this guy here, which was a year ago, it was only like this, no problem, cut around, like I could eliminate these two guys to make it a little bit more space, but I will let it another six months, that's okay, then I will cut them. Yeah, that's kind of it. My work right now is to to cut this stuff because, uh, as you can see, an example here. This guy grew so fast, so many branches. It was too heavy and falling. The root system was not strong enough to hold it. So yeah, I have to um, correct it a little bit. So so probably uh, cut it here. Leaving a small part, which can now grow big. Taking away the climbers, they are awful. Big piece of work to eliminate the climbers always. Very important. So this now can maybe grow a little bit straight or so. Otherwise I can also remove it and plant a new one because yeah, it's really not the... Uh... Can see that?
Let's just plant the guy I prepared. Chopping a little bit. With machete already making a little bit uh, kind of a hole. So yeah, that pleases me much more. Here as example, I'm gonna cut this piece because it goes in this direction. There are a lot, just have to go in this direction. Prefer like that. Here we have a sapote. I planted it from the seed one year ago. It's already quite huge. This guy is uh, not so nice. I cut it down because here also can be better. We have a little bit more space. This marking plant here, they sometimes grow also a little bit too big. So cutting them, also the shape is not so nice. I prefer straight stuff. So renewing it, making it straight. Chopping a little bit. Putting it back into the soil. Nice. Then. The other side here we have another piece of supportive species. Which can be cut back a little bit. So, go on there. Back. Back. They grow very high. Cutting the top because otherwise they get too heavy and with the wind they fall and then happen the same thing like here. It's gonna grow like this and shape is going out of control so same here bringing all this stuff it's gonna be good mulch And a lot of mouth. This is producing like crazy. Look at this bounce. It's only from maybe one plant, so holy. Let's mouth the tapote a little bit. Fresh cut green mulch. Very good, excellent. It's an excellent fertilizer. Climbers, that perfect situation now here.
I can go on repeating this over and over until the line is finished. That's my main work. Well guys, see you then.